Boys and girls, welcome back to the Gap Smacked. We've got some aircon on and we're going. So it's great to see you, and to see you is great. I have just gotten back to Sydney, and uh, let's say that this scope, I would expect it to have more prevalence with those who have a higher sensitivity to depression in general. Now, those of you who do most likely find will probably have a, require a lot more psychological energy to actually get up in the morning. It actually takes a lot of energy for someone who is sensitive to negative emotions to actually get out of bed to do anything. It takes a lot more psychological energy than the average person. For those of you out there who, who are prone to be that way, then when the slightest things go, goes wrong, it can actually add to your already very tenuous hold on uh, mental health and those guys there, look, other people aren't going to understand that. And that's that's not their fault, and it's not anyone's fault, that's the way life works. But there are those who understand that for whatever reason you have a natural predisposition to negative emotion and just to function in a day takes maybe five, six, seven times the effort. So it doesn't take much for something to actually push you down into some sort of aggravated depression. And you hear stories about people who lose their partner or lose their parents, etc., and they fall into an extremely deep depression. The way I probably would frame it is that perhaps they were already struggling to just be at the psychologically neutral type of place. And so it doesn't take much to actually throw them into a very dark place. There are many forms of, forms of escapism. And confrontation is clearly the last thing that someone might want to do about it. So for you, those of you, why is this topic especially important to me? Well, anyone who's hyper creative and who's also had a, a life of, on top of that, abuse and rejection, ostracization, and one who thinks fundamentally differently, whether it's autism, whether it's, you know, you might be an artistic genius or, or someone who perhaps has a, um, a hyper, is someone who's hyper creative but stutters, Whatever it is, you know, there's a tendency that you might want to escape, especially when society doesn't reward that type of talent for some of you out there. So facing things is the only way out, and it makes it worse when you don't face them because then a new thing lands in front of the other thing you need to face. So you're constantly regressing until it, until it becomes almost impossible or it feels almost impossible to get out of that, that uh, rabbit hole or, uh, you know, abyss, let's just call it. So what are you left with? Well, uh, uh, people will then try to escape via other means, whether it's some people have a natural predisposition to the positive effects of alcohol. Uh, some people uh, get that dopamine kick with uh, pornography. Some get it with speeding, uh, and not, not speed itself, but uh, speeding very fast. Some get it by doing bungee jumping, whatever it is. And there's, not, there's nothing wrong with those events on their own, of course, uh, so none of these particular things in some sort of moderation have any have any issue i mean well maybe that maybe the drugs do but apart from apart from that you could you could speed on a natural racetrack or you could go to germany etc etc but when you are feeling the absolute need to do it then it could very well be that you're being held hostage by those desires because the brain has some sort of memory of the pleasure of escaping other times that it's done it and of course the more often you do it it gets reinforced so it's a negative cycle you do it it feels amazing your brain remembers it feels amazing it then reminds you of it next time you feel down so for you guys to know and many of you might identify with this and for those of you who've been here for long enough you know one of the things that motivates me is that i have a very hyper creative hyper hyper creative mind and that unfortunately means that i think very differently to the population but it allows me to do certain things like i built that hybrid sled etc 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 and that's you know there are many people like that this is not terribly unique but the interesting thing about these type of talents is that they're not things that this society say psychologically praises as a step forward normally you've probably heard it from your parents or maybe you are the parent who said don't do art that won't get you a job don't do music that won't get you a job uh, don't think differently just dress like everybody else and you, you know people parents might do that I'm thinking as I get older I'm, I'm thinking that they do that because they're scared they don't want to die and leave you on the street homeless but unfortunately there's a lot of us who think that differently that society is without meaning to punishing you for being who you are and 
it's looking for any opportunity via, let's say, ideologically possessed people of society or people who don't think straight, uh, who don't think deeply about things, who become exponents of that society that judges you. And on top of that, all of your plans could also go to shit at the same time. And then you start thinking, what's it all for? Why am I wasting my time? Um, the world is meaningless. You, you can become nihilistic. But ultimately, I, I mean, I just went through that experience for the last two hours whilst, whilst I was off scope. And this is a normal thing. I've learned, I've done this for years. I understand that for the rest of my life, this will be something that I will have to deal with. And you get, you get better at it. It doesn't get less painful. The last couple of hours, my mind is, of course, traveling down these very dark passages, even though all it was, was a fail. It was, it was a fail with the autism sled ride today. I have now been on the road altogether for six and a half hours. And in the end, you, it was for nothing. Lost, lost, you know, a quarter of a week's wage, etc., etc. But you have to, well, not you, but what I, what I did was I allowed those thoughts to come through and remember that it's okay. Remember that that day will pass, whether we like it or not. And it is not something to be harsh about, or you, you cannot be harsh on yourself because you are thinking negative thoughts about yourself and your life, etc., etc. That's just a normal consequence of that type of brain that is very sensitive to wanting things to go correctly. We have to remember that a lot of what we measure ourselves against are our, our, our own expectations. So we measure ourselves against our own expectations. We don't see what we've achieved based upon what other people see. So we have a very warped view because we cannot do a survey on every single person in the world and how they would view what we've done and why would that be important? Upon which metric do we decide to place any sort of importance? These type of things constantly go on. So, you know, I constantly hear, and, and many people might hear the same thing. They'll be like, my God, you know, I've, I've, you, I've read your book and you've lived a million lives and you've done all of these amazing things and you've been able to be successful at so many different things. And, and I personally don't see that. It doesn't matter what I do, I, will, I never ever see that, I never feel that. I just feel like whatever I do, it's never enough. And time is running out and sometimes what's it all for, etc, etc. So, so that's to show anyone who feels that way that it's a normal thing to feel, especially if you're a hyper-creative type of person who thinks very differently, thinks very deeply about everything all the time, who naturally is, naturally has a brain which constantly focuses on the negative. Now you can train it, you know, like the eagle types of the world who are not naturally prone to depression, who have a much higher level of industriousness, much, much higher level of duty, and more of a, say, conservative temperament, and not politically conservative, I mean a naturally conservative temperament, which is very good at focusing, very good at sticking to one task and being really good at it, like a manager, like a, whatever it is, some, you know, something like that, that has that sort of diligent mind that doesn't struggle in the way other minds do, those introverted, um, open minds, the ones that sort of travel every single place, and do not tend to compartmentalize. So, you know, that our type of mind might look at a car and then from the car imagine a wheel and then from the wheel imagine non-Semitic tribe in Mesopotamia that invented the wheel. I can't remember their name for, they invented writing, uh, the idea of writing, even though they didn't invent the alphabet, they invented writing and they invented the wheel. I can't remember their bloody names. Someone will think of it right now. Uh, and they ended up merging with the Akkadians. But uh, before that, they had their own language that went dead. It was a language isolate just like um, Hungarian and uh, the Basque language. It's just gone. It was about six to 8,000 years ago. It was before the Assyrian Empire. It doesn't matter. So that type of brain, it just has this natural tendency to delve into a world of magic that's so colorful and so bright and so vivid. And it's, you know, it's a beautiful thing because it's hyper creative, but it also has a side effect, which is that you constantly also see the negatives in many different things you can get extremely depressed and not because something happened, but the brain itself has a natural state of severe depression. Uh, it's, it's a chemical issue. It's probably related to the fact that dopamine um, gets uh, re -up, uh, what do you call it? Uh, reuptaken very quickly by the brain. It absorbs it because it's a hyperactive type of brain. I don't know the exact details, but obviously SSRIs can help defeat that uh, because they are inhibitors of the, uh, of the dopamine reuptake or the serotonin reuptake points. Uh, the point is that you will, it will constantly happen that you'll get waves of depression and there are people who will not ever be able to understand. They just, 
they will try, but they just are very lucky that they don't have that sensitivity, which actually, it's like, it's like a dial in the brain that's turned way up. And obviously we do need that. As humans, we need that because those are the type of people that are the musicians and also the homeless and also the, uh, that's one of the reasons I exercise every day. And you only need a, something little to, to tip you over the edge. So you, you need a culmination of um, why is it, where is one's life going? A hypercreative person doesn't have a set path or doesn't feel like they have a set path and they naturally gravitate towards something that's very different. And most of the time they will fail and most of the people themselves of that kind will also fail. So there's a lot of failure for a high-end reward in some cases. So one of the things that one has to do is not tie themselves to external matrices. Me failing today at this sled ride, the weather was bad. Uh, by the time I got there, it was raining. I didn't have a helmet. I forgot to bring a, a water, you know, a protective jacket. All of these things happened and that type of brain will naturally be devastated over things like that. So, if any of you there have, a, if you're a hyper creative, you probably, or a, or a hyper hyper gifted person, or your child is hyper gifted, they'll probably be, have a tendency for that, because there is a connection between hyper giftedness, hyper creativeness, and this hyper sensitivity to negative emotion, they all seem to come together. Uh, anyway, and so yes, you will naturally have sensations like the world is going to collapse. Don't let that defeat you, you don't. You don't say, well, this is the end of everything. No, you acknowledge that, yes, it's difficult and life is finite. And what can we do to share with other people, in my case, in order to, say, provide more knowledge to other people that, that I've discovered from this type of internal function? It honestly, the whole two hours back, I honestly thought, you know, this two hours was really a venture down towards the electric chair and that it was inevitable. You start to immediately, your brain starts to immediately put together all many, many negative things that have happened to you that you feel are not your fault and people that abused you and people that put you down and people, and then you think of mistakes in the past and you start to wonder why you, why you, etc. would it be better if you weren't born? I mean, these type of thoughts can, can come and they will come, but it's important to understand that that is a natural response in the brain. The brain is trying to sort information out. And once you get past that point, you will have new information. And life doesn't have to be about being happy. It's much more important to have a meaning. Me knowing, so, so that I was gonna share this with you guys once I recovered from the emotional swing, was actually one of the, one of the reasons that gave my life meaning today. And it's funny that without this whole loss of a day, loss of time, and this delving into this, say, black sea of, you know, abysmally negative emotions. Without any of that, I would not have been able to get on scope and share these thoughts with you guys so that you can take from them what you can and make them even better and then share them with other people. And so humanity has had a net benefit out of this, even though it might seem that that was not the case the whole time. It's important to put that in your calendar if you can remember. Write it in your calendar, put a little note near your bed, I don't know, tell it to someone that you trust who can remind you every few days that there is a benefit to things not going as planned. I would, I would love to do gym. I would love to read Arabic, read Aramaic, read French, read Italian, read those two books I've got to read, read this lecture on secularism, you know, do some advanced mathematics. There's so many things to do and none of them got done today. And the thing I wanted to do, I also failed at. I mean, talk about a miserable day if you wanna, if you wanna think about an, abs, an abject failure of a day. And yet out of those days come scopes like this and you can regroup, remake some new notes, etc., etc.